Today I'd like to discuss the most common micronutrient deficiency that can keep you on the short side. Personally, growing up, um, I think my growth was stunted through wrestling. I wrestled uh, junior high school, high school, and I started college until I fractured my neck. But for about three years, I actually went through cycles of literally starving myself to make weight. I think that stunted my growth. And I'm only 6'2". Now you might say, well, you're only 6'2". But yeah, but my dad's 6'5". My younger brother is 6'7". My mom is 6 foot. No, I'm just kidding. She's 5'8". So if you're a teenager and you starve yourself, you know, especially three years in a row, that can have an influence on your nutrition. Most stunted growth is related to malnutrition. It is so important in the beginning years of life that you have all the essential nutrients. I'm talking about protein. I'm talking about vitamins minerals, healthy fats, because as this relates to growth and development, not just your height, but organs and tissues. If you're deficient in iodine, for example, it can affect your cognitive function. If you're deficient in zinc, you can definitely be shorter as well. If you have some problem with your pituitary, that's going to affect your height because the pituitary controls something called growth hormone. But generally speaking, girls generally have a growth spurt between 10 years old and 14 and boys between 12 and 15. But if we take a look at growth, we're going to talk about all of the things. We're going to talk about the protein, talk about vitamins and minerals, and we're going to talk about hormones. Let's start with hormones, okay? In a child, growth hormone primarily helps you grow. It helps your bones grow, helps your muscles grow, helps your height. But then when you become an adult, growth hormone has other functions. It keeps and preserves protein on your body. It's anti-aging. It helps you with weight loss. And there's several things about growth hormone I want to talk about. Number one, it's stimulated by amino acids, protein. If you're not consuming enough quality protein, your growth hormone can be diminished. If you have a high sugary diet, if you have high blood glucose, or you have insulin resistance, if you don't sleep enough, growth hormone is made by your pituitary, goes to your liver, and then your liver makes insulin-like growth factor number one. Now, this hormone, if deficient, can definitely make you shorter. And this hormone is also triggered by a good amount of amino acids and zinc. You know, how could you become deficient in zinc? Number one, not consuming enough foods high in zinc. And of all the foods that are high in zinc, we have red meat, other animal meats, we have fish, shellfish, and there's not a lot of zinc in plant foods, especially grains and especially corn especially cassava, especially rice. And if we just take a look at the country that has the highest zinc deficiency, that would be in Africa, the Republic of Congo. And I'm primarily talking about children and mothers. Now, why would that be? Because if you look at their diet, it's mostly composed of rice, corn, grains, and cereals, okay? Now, what's the common denominator of all of those? It's phytic acid. It's a certain chemical that blocks zinc, creating a, a massive zinc deficiency, which can affect the immune system. Okay, what are some other things that can create a deficiency of zinc? Stress, sugar, eating junk food, that was me. Now, I also mentioned something related to sugar, insulin resistance. Most of the population has insulin resistance, and that can create an effect on your growth as well, because the insulin receptor has another function that goes beyond just the regulation of blood sugars. It helps you absorb nutrients. This is why when someone goes on the ketogenic diet and starts to repair this insulin resistance, and now insulin becomes more sensitive, they start having a healing effect with their muscles. Another important nutrient is vitamin D. Vitamin D is another really common deficiency uh, simply because, first of all, kids don't go outside much anymore. It's almost impossible to get from your diet. All the junk food inhibits it, and the inflammation in our guts block the absorption of vitamin D. All of these things influence your growth hormone and your IGF number one, which is the insulin-like growth factor. So if you have a child that has stunted growth, I would definitely um, implement some of these strategies. And there's one more uh, thing that I used in practice that seemed to work very well because your pituitary is at the heart and anything you can do to support the pituitary would be a good thing. There is one product that standard process uh, sold when I was in practice that uh, seemed to really work. It seemed to help children grow a lot more in a short period of time. And it's called pituitrophin PMG. I would definitely recommend that. 
maybe one before bed for maybe three months, just to optimize the potential for a child's growth. Now, since we're on the topic of zinc, there's a lot more to learn. If you have not seen this very interesting video on zinc, I put it up right here. Check it out.